what did you really choose? Today, I want to explore with you the illusion of free will and how much of your lives are truly of your own making. My name is Peggy Van de Plage. I am the creator of the Microdose Diet, and it is really your trusted source for achieving passion, success, happiness in your life and career through alternative medicines like uh, microdosing psilocybin. So, you know, in, in the grand theater of life, we often pride ourselves on being the architects of our own destinies. We really believe that every twist and turn, every success and failure is a result of our deliberative choices. Yet lurking beneath the facade of autonomy lies a very complex interplay of forces that challenge the notion of free will. You know, the saying that not choosing is a choice really echoes in our minds, focusing us to confront the uncomfortable truth. How much of our lives are truly of our own making. And you know, I've been pondering this choosing, non-choosing, conundrum regarding my own life as I'm looking back at choices I thought I actively made, but now seems pretty awfully predestinated. And the interesting thing regarding predestination is that it works both ways. Making the choices you were supposed to do based on your background, but also making the opposite choices you were supposed to do based on your background. In both cases, these choices are not based on free will, but are made in reaction to your own circumstances. And Nietzsche illustrated very nicely in his critique of Christianity, he argued that Christianity emerged actually as a reaction to the oppressive forces of Roman culture, not as an expression of individual choice. It is mind-bending, right? <laughs> but more importantly, what does it mean for you and what can you do about it? So the first thing I want to talk about is the strength of momentum. Human existence is governed not only by the choices we make, but also by the inertia of past decisions and experiences. Our paths are shaped not just by our conscious intentions, but also by a myriad of factors such as upbringing, social environment, and genetic predisposition. These forces create a momentum that propels us along certain paths, often without us even realizing it. We may believe we are steering the ship, but in reality, we are passengers swept along by the currents of circumstance. So consider for an instance, the career path you choose. How much of it is driven by genuine passion and ambition, and how much is dictated by societal expectations or familial pressure? Many of us find themselves trapped in professions they never intended to pursue simply because it was the path of least resistance or the one laid out for them by others. So where do you stand when it comes to your current circumstances? Do you wish for changes but struggle to make them happen? Fret not, I have tips for you just below. So. Keep, keep reading, keep listening, and I will, I will go through that. And if you want some help to take a step back, pre-order my book, The Microdose Diet. It will really help you navigate the changes you want and the changes you need. You can find it on my website at themicrodosediet.com or on Amazon directly at uh, The Microdose Diet. Um, the second thing I want to talk to you about is the difficulty of being present. So in our fast-paced world, the art of being present is increasingly elusive. Our minds are constantly bombarded with distractions and that really it's pulling us away from the moment and into a whirlwind of thoughts and anxieties. And this lack of present makes it difficult to make truly conscious decisions. Instead, we operate on autopilot, reacting to stimuli rather than actively choosing our course of action. 
So for example, how often do you find yourselves scrolling mindlessly for social media or reaching for comfort foods without even considering healthier options? So these actions are not the result of conscious deliberation, but rather the product of habit and conditioning. So we are slaves to our impulses and we are unaware of the forces that drive us to behave in certain ways. The third thing I want to mention is conscious versus subconscious. At the heart of the matter lies the, the distinction between conscious and subconscious decision-making. While we like to believe that our choices are the product of rational thought and careful considerations, studies have shown that much of our decision-making occurs at the subconscious level. Our brains are adept at processing vast amount of information, often leading us to make choices before we are even aware of them. And this subconscious influence can be seen in various aspects of our lives, from consumer behavior to in personal relationships. Marketing experts exploit our subconscious desire to sell products, while psychologists study the hidden biases that shape our perceptions of others. We may think that we are acting of our own accord, but in reality, our subconscious mind is pulling the strings behind the scene. So why does it matter? So I would say in a world where the illusion of choice really reigns supreme, why does it even matter whether your decisions are truly your own? And the answer really lies in the quest for authenticity and self-awareness. By acknowledging the factors that influence your choices, you gain a deeper understanding of yourselves and of your place in the world. You become less beholden to societal expectations and more attuned to your own true desires and aspirations. Moreover, recognizing the limits of your free will allows you to cultivate empathy and compassion for others. You better understand that everyone is navigating their own set of circumstances and that judgment and blame are often misplaced. Instead of condemning others for their choices, you will strive to offer support and understanding, knowing that you are too subject to the whims of fate. So how do you break free of illusions and regain your free will? So the first uh, tip I want to discuss is be present. So one of the most powerful antidotes to autopilot living is the practice of mindfulness. And it's really the art of being fully present in the moment. So cultivate awareness of your thoughts, of your emotions, of your physical sensations, without judgment or attachment. Really learn to savor the richness of everyday experiences, whether it's the taste of your morning coffee or, or the warmth of the sun on your skin. By grounding yourself in the present moment, you break free from the grasp of past conditioning, but also future anxieties. And it really allows you for greater clarity and freedom of choice. So that's the first tip, be present. The second tip is reprogram your subconscious mind. So I discussed that much of our behavior is governed by subconscious programming that is acquired over years of conditioning and experience. To break free from predestination and autopilot, it is essential to reprogram your subconscious mind with new belief and patterns of thinking. Engage in practices such as visualization, affirmation, guided meditations, hypnotherapy, to implant positive messages and intentions into your subconscious. Challenge limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering narratives 
that align with your desired outcomes. Remember, the subconscious mind is a powerful ally in your journey toward liberations. Harness its potential to effect lasting change. So the third tip in order to free yourself from illusion is the microdose diet. And you know what? I know it is easy to say to be more present or to reprogram your subconscious mind. But oh, do you actually do that? So fear not. I really have you covered. So in the microdose diet, I give you every step of the way on how to rewire your brain, calm your body, master your emotions and increase your energy to reach more success, passion, and happiness. So the microdose diet is a 90-day plan that incorporates alternative medicines such as microdosing psychedelics, tapping, visualization, and journaling to reprogram limiting beliefs, feelings, and emotions into more expensive ones. So this approach involves using microdoses of psilocybin in a safe and strategic manner. So the fourth tip is question everything. And the first step really toward liberation is to question the assumptions and beliefs that have kept you tethered to preconceived notions of destiny. Challenge the narratives that dictate your choices and behaviors and dare to explore alternative perspectives. Ask yourself, are my current beliefs and actions aligned with my true desires and aspirations? By questioning everything, you open yourself up to new possibilities and you pave the way for genuine self-discovery. The fifth and last step is one step at a time. Breaking free from predestination and autopilot is not an overnight endeavor, but rather a gradual process of self-transformation. Start by identifying one area of your life where you feel particularly constrained or stagnant. Could be your career, relationships, personal habits, Take small intentional steps towards change, whether it's pursuing a new hobby, initiating a difficult conversation, or setting boundaries with someone or with technology, for example. Remember, progress is measured not by speed, but by consistency and perseverance. So in conclusion, the notion of free will is a complex and multifaceted concept that challenges our understanding of human agency. While we may like to believe that we are the masters of our own destiny, the reality is far more nuanced. Our choices are shaped by a multitude of influences, both conscious and subconscious, Making it, making it very difficult to discern where our true agency lies. Yet by embracing this uncertainty, we can embark on a journey of self-discovery and personal growth, unearthing the forces that shape our lives and learning to navigate them with grace and resilience. I hope this has been a helpful conversation for you. I believe sincerely we all need to get, uh, you know, ourselves liberated from illusions and regain our sense of agency and really, really act on our free will. For that, we need to uh, delayer quite a bit old limiting beliefs, stuck emotions, nervous system, overtaxed but also low level of energy. So I really, really believe that is the first step for us as you know, a society, as humanity, if we want to go to the next level, we really need to break free from this illusion. So I hope this post will help you. I hope the microdose diet will help you. And I really hope that you will join in this journey because at the end of the day, that's the only journey worth living. Thank you for being here with me and talk to you next week. Bye-bye.